Okay, let's open up an assembly here. And we're going to start by placing our crankshaft. It's nice to just put one piece in here at a time. And to constrain this, I'm going to use just the overall coordinate system that already exists. Each part has its own coordinate system, and then the overall system has a coordinate system. So I'm going to plug the end on that world plane and also constrain the axis. So now the crankshaft can do nothing but turn. It can't move horizontally. It can just turn. OK, so here is the connecting rod. We're going to have four of these. You can just keep left clicking until you place all your parts. Escape gets you out of the place command. And for these, we'll go ahead and constrain surface to surface and the axis to the axis for those bolt holes. Again, just click on the curved surfaces to grab the entire axis and try and get the whole axis instead of just a little center point on these. OK, so once each of those are individually stuck together, I'm going to go ahead and put that on the crankshaft. For all of these connecting rods, I'm going to grab the curved surface and put axis to axis on here. And once all of the um, axes are around where they need to go, I'll go ahead and line up the surfaces with one another too. And I need to might need to make sure that the cap and the connecting rod are flush with one another and then also snap it to the other surface. Remember, you can change the direction around for which surface snaps to which surface. Zoom in there really close, just using that wheel button on your mouse and rotate it around until you get the right angle for these guys. You'll be really good at adding constraints and moving and zooming and getting all of these guys after this. OK, yeah, you'll have to probably fight with it a little bit. If it's not wanting to constrain, just grab it with your mouse and drag it around a little bit. You want it kind of close to how you want it constrained before you snap it into place. And also know that all of the constraints you're adding are showing up in that left-hand menu. So you can see all of your individual parts over there. And if you look under each part, it'll have all the constraints under there. And you can either suppress constraints or right-click and delete them, get rid of them all together. Sometimes it's good to turn on temporary constraints just to um, align things. And that's the next thing I'm going to do here with these connecting rods. At the end, I want everything kind of moving straight up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and constrain the connecting rod so that their axis of that top little bit where the wrist pin goes is going to just slide straight up and down on this plane in here. And that'll just keep everything aligned with one another. OK, so at the end of this thing, you should be able to see all the constraints that you've added in the menu, highlight them, and you can kind of see what is connected to what. And you should be able to rotate your crankshaft, and all your connecting rods should be nice and straight up and down. Last piece to add here is the piston. And I haven't made wrist pins or bolts. Every little piece is going to fight you. So you can just constrain axis to axis for those holes without actually having the wrist pin in there. But if you want to add a few more pieces to it, that would be great. So I'm going to line up the holes, the axis, and then again, line up the surfaces for each of these pistons. And at the very end, I will align the axis of the piston with that world plane again. OK, so yeah, once again, really zoom in. Make sure you're grabbing what you need to be grabbing. You might have to kind of scooch these around a little bit until you can gain access to the, to the surface that you need to constrain it to. And this will it'll really fight you, but you'll you'll be really good at making assemblies after this. 
Also, remember, if you want to take that next step and create an entire dynamic simulation for this, if you have the constraints in there correctly, it will automatically switch those constraints over into joints, and that is the easiest way to connect pieces together and create joints for these. Okay, so last little piece, we're going to just align our piston axes with that so that they're straight up and down too. And again, just move it around after every constraint that you add to make sure that everything is moving in the way that you want it to move in. At the very end, you can go ahead and turn off the visibility for those working planes so you can see everything a little bit better. And remember that everything you created is right here in the left-hand column. Here what I'm going to do is create a driven constraint. And I'm going to set the angle. This is the coordinate system for the crankshaft and kind of the world coordinate system for the entire assembly. And I'm using the angle between those two planes. If I set it to zero, now that locks it in place so it can't move, but right click on that constraint, drive it, and I'm going to drive it from like zero to a thousand degrees or something. And that's kind of a cheater way to add motion to it without actually opening up the dynamic simulation and fighting through all the joints. So it's just a first quick and easy way to to add some animation to it. Okay, so see if you can get this far. If you have some more time, then add that engine block and play around with gears, camshaft, but that's the first piece of it.